glass. And the first one is called Poetry Slam at the Empty Glass. Of all of the ways that I could have chosen to spend this day, I'm very pleased with the way that I chose. A day spent on learning and a night spent to learning. Good friends in a pissed off cabernet, clinging hard to the glass, chock full of ass. Something to chew on along with these thoughts in this world of the now where we know to what we have and waste no thought on what we ain't got. Because we have friends who will come together in this live music bar on the town's east side. We have friends who will speak the condition and allow us a look inside at some of what's there that just might apply to this business of life in the first person set. We have friends who took time to string words for our conditions the better to get. And right now that seems so nice. And then, you know, we did, uh, Crystal kept doing the things here at the glass and I would make it over occasionally and then they stopped doing the slams, you know, kind of competition and they changed it to where it was just a reading and an open mic. And still for like the last seven years, they have done live music or live poetry here at the glass and you know it's just nobody else is doing that and you look at bigger cities and it's something that happens and it's just one of those things that you know the glass in the small town the glass is doing where you know just uh, like the the bigger town so that always impresses me also um a couple last couple of years last couple of months few months i have uh, written a couple of other pieces about the empty glass and about getting to this spot here, you know, to, to come up here and what, you know, what to say when you're on the, on the stage and people are actually listening to what you have to say, you know, and um, uh, so I've got like a trilogy of empty glass poems and um, the next one I'm going to do is, um, what's it called? I don't even know what it's called. It is called Reasons to Slam. Okay, yeah, that's what it's called. Let me get some water. Hold on one second. I have water. Oh, I have water. I just had to get it. <laughs> Thank you, though. There was a dog in here. I know. Back and Boogie Moore could have come and read his own poem. There you go. So this is a new piece, and uh, I may need the paper. I don't know. We'll see. This is called Reasons to Slam. Why do we speak in such fashion? Why do we speak in this way? Why do we string words together like this, put them to rhythms and send them on waves? Why do we come to these stages? Why did we come here tonight? Why do we fill up these pages with the thoughts and the sights from our lives? Do we really think folks will listen? Do we really think someone care, will care to hear us speak the condition in hopes to have good effect on some other thens there? Or are we just mentally fragile and fraught with the need to feel that we're more than we are, that our clumsy minds are really quite agile? that even in the gutters we can dream of the stars. Yes, we do think folks will listen. We do think someone will care to hear us speak our conditions and have good effect on some other thens there. But we are a bit mentally fragile and fraught with the need to feel that we're more than we are, that our clumsy minds with words become agile, that even in our gutters we can dream of the stars because words are never just words when strung together with performance in mind. They are music with meter and rhythm. And they soothe the souls of beings of like kind. They remove us from all that is physical and put us in dimensions closer to God. The wave and the ray, the beauteous and lyrical. And we realize that it's not all that far from lying in the gutters to flitting among the stars. Why, 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 why do we come to these stages? Why did we come here tonight? Why do we fill up these pages with the thoughts and the sights from our lives? Do we th really think we have an answer? Do we really think we found some clue? Do we really think words can salve the wounds of a heart? and let some healing get through. Do we really think the beating will ease, that beating with which life can punish us all, that the soul will find peace and the mind will find rest just because we turn words into songs? Yes, because the soul is born in music and light, wave and ray. Free from the confines of the physical bounds, we release ourselves on the musical sounds. Thank you. Uh, the third of the empty glass poems is uh, called Just That Much or Something Similar and it's um, I hope nobody gets offended by foul language 
curse, <laughs> but uh, I listened to Saul Williams, and uh, he wrote poems that said things kind of like this, but in different ways. So it's just a rip off of Saul Williams, but shit, you know. If you're going to rip off somebody, rip off Saul Williams. So this is a free bird. We're going free bird next. If I leave here tomorrow. Just that much or something similar. This is what we're, uh, this is, you know, hopefully what I'm looking for tonight. I want to be moved tonight, that's why I care to leave the house, that hope, that desire, that some real motherfucker, some right motherfucker, some in-tune motherfucker will stand up and take the mic and blow it up and sway his or her ass way out there, risking absurdity in classic Ferlinghetti style. A motherfucker that done got beyond caring what everybody thinks and put it on a page and brought it to a stage to spit at folks who can take it. I want to encounter a motherfucker who knows enough to say, yes, the world is going to hell and we are all really fucked. But can't we do without some of the drama? Someone who can see the fine dividing line between living and working in the theoretical and the real. Someone who can say to life, all right, I see. This is the heart of it. This is what I have to take to make it through. And then bends to the task of taking and make it through. I want to see a motherfucker who knows that the words only begin on the page and that there is no place they can't go from there. The type of artist who knows that they don't have to change the whole world with their work. They only have to change their own. If everyone would do just that much or something similar. <laughs> I'm certain, is he done? Is he done?